We're talking to two of my homegirls. One was from Swan, and um, two of them was from Swan. One was from Eight Four, and one was from Seven Nine. We all bloods. I'm the only one alive. So in this dream, they were dead. And I don't believe in talking to the dead, but God do what he do. But I was in the dream, sick on the curb. So I'm the one, crack all the jokes, clowning, laughing, sitting down there. And one of them said to me, would she die um, last year? She died last year. And um, um, in this dream, she says, the other one died of cancer. And in this dream, the other one said, um, yeah, Cola, I'm dead because I didn't do what God told me to do. And she said, I was disobedient. She was sick in her body and all kind of stuff happened in the, in the natural. And so I'm like, what? So I jumped up and realized that I was in a dream, but I know God. That's how he deals with me, dreams, visions, whatever, how he do. Mm -hmm. And so when I looked and seen the seriousness of it, all I can say was after the power of God fell upon me, I began to say, repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. And I began to stand in the middle of the block. And it was women everywhere. And it was men coming around. And it was a whole bunch of demonic attacks. And I got afraid, but I couldn't do nothing but stand and go through whatever it was that God was saying. So when I woke up, I pondered in my heart for months and months and to the following year. And I was actually different pastors and friends. So I went to one of my real good, good friends, Pastor Campbell. And to Johnny Campbell, and I said, Pastor, this was this year. I said, the Lord showed me a vision, and showed me a dream, but then he spoke to me about calling the women forth. And he told me that we're going to be losing our children, and mainly our men. And the Lord said that it's judgment in the land when everybody believes that we're about to have peace. We're about to have a whole bunch of money. We could be having a whole bunch of branding. I said, but the Lord said that we're going to be losing our children and the men. And he said, yeah, I said, yeah, I said, and I told him some other things that I'm not at liberty right now to say. And so later, uh, maybe two, three days later, he called me back and he said, prophet, I said, yeah, what's going on? He said, did you hear? I said, no. He said, they just killed my son. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what? So from that call, I got series of calls. Mm -hmm. Big home girl, my son is dead. They just killed the other homegirl. So we had a um, home going service, um, and then they knock at the door the police telling her your son been dead for two days. So me, everybody knows I don't like to be up in the forefront. I don't like to just be out there. I just like to set up souls to be saved and delivered. Mm -hmm. I like to do the footwork, the hard work, so that way I'll be left alone so I won't have all the attacks. Let's just be honest about it. <laughs> so the Lord dealt with me. He gave me a scripture. I'm going to read this scripture. It's Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 17 through 21. He says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Consider ye and call for the mourning women that they may come, and send for cunning women that they may come, and let them make haste and take up a welling for us, that our eyes may run down with tears and our eyelids gush out with waters. For a voice of wailing is heard out of Zion. How are we spoiled? We are greatly confounded because we have forsaken the land, because our dwellings have cast us out. Yet, hear the word of the Lord, O ye women, and let your and let you let your ear receive the word of his mouth, and teach your daughters wailing, and every one her neighbor a lamentation. For death has come up into our windows and is entered into our palaces to cut off the children from without and the young men from the streets. Jesus. And so um, when the Lord gave me that, I pondered on it and I began to cry and I began to weep because I said, Lord, how can I share with people and tell people this bad news that you always give me to give people is the bad news. And so the Lord was sharing with me that call for the women, mm. the uneducated women, the educated women, the preachers, the prophetess, the hoes, the killers, the dope dealers, call everybody, call everybody, call all the women and tell them that it's judgment in the land and we have need of everybody. Amen. 
Because everybody have a story, everybody right. have situations, things right. that you've been through, and it's time not only just to share, it's time for us to seek the face of God yes, before sir. it's too late. Yes. Yes, God have a call for everybody in here. Yes. Everybody in this building. Yes. And what God wants is for us to get clean and clean for a yes. yes. It's time for us to fast. Yes. It's time for us to pray and cry out. The reason why God is calling for the women, and I'm not sure, I'm not tripping on the bros because we need the bros. I got something to say. The brothers. Excuse me, God. So I got something to say. God is calling us because even through history, when something was very hard, if the man was out of place or he needed to sneak and get something done, you know, even use the hardest to sneak the brothers on out. Mm -hmm. Whenever the hard things come, he called for the women. Because it's a voice that we have. It's a certain cry yeah. that we have. It's a sound that we have that we know how to go in and enter into his courts and get a word from God. And so God trying to get us back in that place. When I first got saved, and I was gay man, I'm not gonna go into the story, but when I got saved, they taught me about prayer and fasting. Mm -hmm. I needed a God, I needed deliverance. You know what I'm saying? I slept with everybody and their granddaddy. You know, all the bloods in LA. Got kids by all the bloods. And um, I still had a good name, if that even makes sense. Mm -hmm. You get me? But at the end of the day, I was full of more, I had more demons than Mary Magdalene. But the thing was, I did drive-bys and walk-bys, and I got two bodies on my life, but it's up under the blood. And, and, and when I got saved, I had to go to prayer. They had seemed like we had church Sunday to Sunday. <laughs> and um, the prayer, all the older women, that was our first lady, um, Teresa Lalas, um, Sister Atkins, my mother in the Lord, my godmother, and um, Elder Atkins, Elder Atkins, Elder, Elder Eddie Atkins Jr. Yeah. helped me. He showed me. I remember crying. Um, we was in prayer and I was crying and I said, I don't ever want to go back. Help me not to go back. I don't want to go back. And I was crying and praying. It was me, him, and honey. And he was just praying, but privately, many times, he would pray for me, and they would cast out demons. Our church was high on that big time. Mm -hmm. Casting out demons and devils. That was a norm to us. You come in, you come evangelistic. You got demons and devils, they leaving today. Not tomorrow, they leaving today. If you have anything lingering tomorrow, we're going to come knock at your door. We're going to set it up. We're going to eat. Come on, baby. Let's go shopping. Let's go eat. And we're going to use some wisdom right. how to get to you right. so we can get you delivered and set free. Mm -hmm. And during that time, we had teams of people. We had I was in the choir. And in this choir, I couldn't sing. And Fred Martin was over the choir. So they let me in the choir so they could keep up with me. They used some wisdom. <laughs> and even though Hallelujah. I caused a little havoc in the choir, they still covered me. <laughs> In the choir. What a blessing. So until they till I got stable enough on my feet to be on my own. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so what's required of us today is it's time for us to utilize who we are as a woman. Everybody here has their own ministry. And I'm asking everybody to come out and be a part of a thousand women yes. standing mm -hmm. to be collective so we can deal with the issues in each and every woman's community. Mm -hmm. You might have a drive-by happen in your community. But there's nobody there, you can't reach your church to come and do the um, visual. When you call us, or a group of us, we on speed down, we rushing there, why? Because we need to get there and pray for them souls yeah. to try to stop doing some more drive-bys mm -hmm. and some walk-bys. Because if you don't meet them where they at, they gonna meet you and your kids and That's your right. grandkids right. Right. where they are at. Mm -hmm. So it's time for us. Yes, we can be in church all day. We can shout all day. We can pray all day. But they out there killing. They out there raping. They out there pimping. They doing all kinds of stuff. They got the girls pimping. Like the pastor said. She said they had them sleeping with dogs. They doing all kind of stuff. And I'm going to tell y'all something. It's mostly the church people kids out there. Yeah. They grandkids. They great grandkids. You know why the judgment is on the land? Because of us. Jesus. Because of us. The church, the body of Christ, the people, whoever's in here mm -hmm. that accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, 
and you're part of the body of Christ, we're all the problem. Mm -hmm. Because I want every woman in here, if you can raise your hand and say, I know for a fact I'm doing all I'm supposed to do, and I know I ain't going to have no blood on my hand, I want you to raise your hand. You feel like that? I absolutely. Okay, so let okay. Well, y'all y'all make it in. Y'all y'all can close your eyes and go on and get y'all reward. No problem. I got you. But at the end of the day, let me tell y'all something. I ain't finished. My point. So at the end of the day, there is some things that we need to fix. Mm -hmm. Your work yes. is not done. That's right. If That's you still fact. here. That's a fact. If you still here and you feel your work is done and you prep everything is done, you you out of here. You go into glory. But my point is, is that God have need of you. Amen. And it's time for us to get oh, out there and do amen. what we need to do. That's right. Amen. I don't that's care right. how much money you give. That's I don't right. care what you do. I don't care what you do. God have need of you. The that's work is not done. That's Our communities is crying out. I get calls all the time. Big home girl, I just kill somebody. Big home, can you help? Can you come pray? You know, I cry to Noreen. Noreen is my therapist. I have to go to Noreen sometimes. Noreen, I'm crying. And, I, and sometimes I don't come because my stuff be so heavy. Where is it going to go? I don't mm -hmm. even want to bother my bishop because who want to put that problem on him and he look, you make you look like you're a problem all the time because that's all I know from preachers and pastors. You're a problem. Mm -hmm. You hear me? Uh -huh. So that's all I know. Why? Because they can't handle the problem people. Uh -huh. Jesus. Uh -huh. They can't handle the no. problem people. Mm -hmm. Why? Because, yes, they feel with the Holy Ghost. Yes, they speak in tongues. Yes, they go to church. And yes, they shout. And yes, they have a good word. Yes, they prophesy. But I found out something by reading the word that the Lord showed me. I don't have my notes here, but if I have to go look, I'll look. I want to tell you about Jesus. I was reading about Jesus before he went through a hard trial where he said he was led into temptation. Mm -hmm. The Bible said he was full of the Holy Ghost. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> before that happened. Mm -hmm. Then I was reading about Stephen, how Stephen was full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And when he was full of the Holy Ghost, he had wisdom, he had <laughs> knowledge, he had capabilities that the human didn't even have. Amen. He had insight. Mm -hmm. So that's what God want to do with us. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. we, it's time for us to really fast. When are we, are we really where we think we should be at? Right. Where we can walk out here and our shadow heal people? All right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. We ain't doing nothing. Okay? Come on. Mm -hmm. It's time for the women to come together. And I just want to share this. It's been on my heart. God impressed upon me to share. And I had talked to a few sisters, kind of lost a few of my friends. And they told me, they said, sis, I think a man deposited that in you. Because, you know, you, you, you slept with so many. So I think they deposited that in you. I said, a man did. A couple of them did. The Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Oh, and what he deposited in me. A couple of them did. Yes, what he deposited in me is that. We need to take care, more care of our men. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We wondering why we don't have no men in our house. Yes. And, you know, our sons and our yes. uncles and nephews, our preachers, yes. the ones that really heart is really after God. Mm -hmm. We don't take care of our men like we should. Mm -hmm. We think because mama talk crazy to them that we can talk crazy to them. Mm -hmm. And we don't have to be so mm -hmm. strong. I'm a pastor too. God speaks to me too. Yeah, Amen. we do. Project. But God still believe in order. Amen. There's Amen. order. And it's time for submission, and we need to start being like women. Yes. And I know I'm one of the strongest ones. I find myself cracking jokes, do a lot of stuff. But I just want to encourage us as women that if we can just come together, if each woman here can um, ask five or six other women, when we come together, put out the call like the homies, they be putting out those. Who do you call? <laughs> Put them calls out. Ooh. Now, sisters, we need to come together, band yes. together yes. with your ideas and with your plans. And um, first of all, I'm trying to just set up where we have meetings of um, fasting and praying. He said, call for the cunning women, the welding women, the weeping women. Call for the women. You lost your children. You lost your husband. You broke and you hurt. He said, call for them. Amen. Teach your daughters the well. Because mm -hmm. I know every tear that we drop is bottled up. Mm -hmm. I'm telling y'all something. Amen. It's time for us to cry out to God yes. to change yes. stuff. Esther did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Esther was a young girl. Mm -hmm. Foster kid. Mm -hmm. Brought to the king's palace. Gave, was favored. Was given favor. 
And I know she was working while wounded. She had no mama, no daddy, and her uncle had to take care of her. Mm -hmm. Come on, she was working while she was wounded. Mm -hmm. All in the king's palace, given to a king, and she's a young little girl, young girl. But God used her to turn some things in the whole land yeah. because she went to him yes. to get some instruction. Yes. Yes. And I'm paraphrasing everything, y'all forgive me. I, I, you know, Good. meet me okay. where I'm at for this yes. time and I'm going to get it together. I'm yes. embarrassed. My bishop here. Oh, no. no. Just give me a minute. No, it's all in order. But we got to do this thing. It's time Amen. for us to get everything in order because we need our men. Sis, we can't work without no men. Amen. That's right. We can't work without no men. That's Amen. Right. I always say, I ain't worried about them, brother. I got a whole bunch of them, the homies. No. I want the man that God has for me in due time. Because yeah. see, I'm working. I'm, I'm working while wounded because I still need deliverance. Yes. Yes. So I feel like that I'm not capable of doing the work or having a call upon my life because I'm still wounded. That's just how I feel, just being honest. Amen. But at the end of the day, I know the word of God is real. Yes. He told me, lay aside every sin and weight. That's so easily beset you. Yes. So some stuff I just have to do. Mm -hmm. But a lot of it I just want God to do it. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like when you created me, you called me, you know I've been through all this stuff. So I know you healed me. I know you didn't me. I ain't game back no more. I ain't sleep with nobody. Mm -hmm. I'm not fighting. I'm not doing all this stuff. I'm not verbally abusing my kids no more. Well, just one yesterday, the other day. But, but you know, not on the norm. Not on the norm. Not on the norm. That was a cause for that one. That was okay. a cause. Uh -huh. So, but at the end of the day, I'm thinking, okay, God, you gotta, uh, can you just take this other stuff from me? Because I really don't feel like fasting and doing all that extra stuff again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that extra stuff again will get me full of the Holy Ghost. Come on. It will get me what I need. You want Come your on. kids' mind changed? You want your kids delivered? Yes. You want your husband? Yes. You want the man to say, I do to you? Yes. You want God to let you know that, okay, God, this is the woman for me? Yes. You want God to fix your finances? Yes. Well, he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God yes. and his righteousness yes. and all these things shall be added yes. unto you. Yes. Yes. So you got to seek him first. Well, how do I seek him? Read my word and fasting. Yes. Those two come together. Read my word, fasting, and praying. Mm -hmm. You cannot get nothing from God from not reading that word, fasting, and praying. I can get a word all day. Go to my bitch, bitch, what you think God said? And this and that. He's going to be quiet. He's going to be quiet. He's going to be quiet. Long time. If God don't say nothing, he ain't saying nothing. At the end of the day, whatever he tell me is always instruction. Go back to the drawing board. I'm not, he's not God. Go do what God told you to do. You know how we do, y'all. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It be so rough and tough. So instead of us going to God and saying, God, which way should I go? Mm -hmm. God, what should I do? How should I do it? And we think we should know.